Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Joe Alvarez. And today I want to do something a little different. Right now, what you're looking at, this waveform right here, this is a beat I did back in 2004, I believe. And this is going to be my first time listening to this. And honestly, I don't remember. The, I've been listening to a little bit on my phone because I was going through my email um, and then I saw some old files, some MP3s, and I was like, you know what? Let me make some reaction videos or some stuff I did back when. So I haven't really fully heard this. I just listened to the intro and I was like, you know what? Let me listen, let me do a review on this. Um, and regretfully, I didn't save a lot of my stuff from when I first started producing, which was back in 1999. Cause after a couple of years in, I was like, I'm still kind of trash. So I don't really want to keep none of this stuff. But I regret that because I don't have a lot of my archive stuff from back in the day. I only have a few remaining things. So this beat I'm about to play is essentially 16, 17 years old at this point, which is crazy. So I want to just listen to analyze and see if there's an evolution to see if this beat was trash to see if it was good to see if i sounded like anyone else just just to g give myself some type of reaction um so without further ado i'm about to hit the play button on you right now and <laughs> let's see what happens i'm a little nervous i don't know why but let's go Cringy. It's a little cringy for my taste. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's kind of cool, but it's also kind of whack at the same time. Um, the mix, I definitely got way better at mixing. Like I'm listening to this. I'm like, oh my God, that bass and that kick just sounds like there's no separation. Everything just sounds like <laughs> clunked up together. And at the time, this was probably like 2004. I found this in my email um, and it, it had like 2004 where I emailed it to one of my homies. So I probably probably could have made it 2003, 2004, which was shit damn near 20 years ago almost. Um, so this was maybe like three or four years into me playing around with beats. I say playing around because the first... The first like year or two, I was just kind of just messing around. And then after that, everyone was kind of telling me, yo, you kind of dope, man. You should take this thing serious. And that's when I was like, all right, I'm all right. Let me see what happens. Um, so then, and, and if you're listening to this, you can definitely hear that it's like a Dr. Dre ripoff. Because back then, when that Chronic 2001 came out in 99, man, I wanted to be like Dre back then. It was just like, I'll emulate everything he did and and just like just try to learn and try to sound like that album, which was like to me one of the best mixing album one of the best mix albums of his generation and probably one of the best produced albums of of the hip hop generation. Um 
Anyway, I'm rambling on, but anyway, what I hear in this beat, I love the rhythm. My drums have always been on point. Rhythm has always something that's come to me pretty easily. Again, the mix sounds to me not like the 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 older Joe listening to this. The mix sounds not good. It's wouldn't say it's trash, but it's not good at all. It's like very mediocre to the kind of weak side. The arrangement sounds very repetitive. Um, there's not a lot of changes beside those little clashes and the rhythm changes that kind of keep repeating itself. There's not a lot of other stuff going on in there. So um, I've definitely gotten way better at arranging, learning how to use effects to my advantage as a producer, got way better at mixing, way better at changing up the repetition and the repetitiveness of a beat. And I say that because you have to have some type of repeti- repetition, repetition in your music. But at the same time, you don't want to be overly repetitive because then it just gets like this beat. It hits kind of hard at first, like, oh, it's kind of dope. But then it just keeps doing the same thing over and over again. So if I had to rate this beat on a grade scale, (laughs) I ain't going to lie. Like, oh, I'm probably going to give this shit like a C minus D (laughs) plus if there's a D plus. I might be a little too harsh on myself, but... Um, from what I know now to what I knew then, like, I know I can do, I can take the same beat and flip it, make it 10 times better, mix it way better, arrange it way better and just compose it way better. Um, but anyway, man, I just wanted to go down cringy, nostalgic lane for a while. Um, just cause I wish I would have saved some of my stuff from back in the day. Uh, one of my homes used to always save my stuff and he still, one time he gave me, a whole bunch of this stuff on CDs. And this is when I thought I got better. I'm like, I'm, I got way better than that. I don't need this. So I just threw this stuff away, which I regret every day to this day. Because they were on CDs before like all these fancy like hard drives that could hold like eight terabytes of stuff. Um, so I can never get that stuff back. So I do regret that. Um, but anyway, man, I just wanted to go down memory lane and... And just react to one of my old beats, man. It's been so long. Honestly, I don't remember making this beat. Um, this is just one of my couple of like beats I used to email back and forth to my homies um, that I had in my email from way back, again, almost 20 years ago. So it's called Death in the Sky. I wish I had the file to remix this. I'm going to say I probably made this um, if it was 2003, 2004, around that era, I was still using the MPC 2000 Excel and I was transitioning over to Reason. So I probably, I probably made this, I'm probably going to say I probably made this in Reason. I, I was using Reason for a while. I remember when that first came out, I was like mind blown. Um, but then I realized I love my MPC and I sold my MPC. That's one of my other biggest regrets is selling my damn MPC. I wish I would never done that because nowadays they're too damn expensive. The 2000 XL, not so much, but the 2000, the, the MPC 60, MPC 3000, those bad boys are super expensive. Um, and I want to, yeah, I want to say I either use Reason for this or the MPC with the Triton rack. I sold the Triton rack. That's another thing I wish I would have kept. Not as much as the MPC, but just for nostalgic purposes. I feel like when I was young, I didn't appreciate all that cool stuff that I had. Um, And I wish I would have kept it now because it would have been great to implement now, especially with the boom bap era, the vintage, lo-fi era. You know what I mean? That stuff kind of coming back to the front. Um, Anyway, guys, I'm ranting, but this is definitely a reaction video. This is the reaction that I got. It's kind of cringy. But I also feel like, all right, for back then, for being young at producing, not even a couple years in, before the internet explosion, before you can go on, be, shit, this is before YouTube even existed, and it had all these tutorials and all these, like, these, this free information. This is essentially what I learned on my own. Maybe, I don't even think Google was out back then, but I was using Yahoo as a search engine. I was using that just to learn the basics of compression, EQing. And scales, which um, I got kind of decent back then, but the information wasn't as grand and free as it is now. And they definitely have the the websites and all the the cool, um, you know, 
web magazines putting out all that good stuff. So, um, so again, I'm going to rate this a, a C minus, D plus, uh, give it an A for effort for being so young in the game and not being musically trained and not really being taught by anyone. I'm um, just kind of grabbing it and going and see what I can make. Anyway, guys, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this beat. I appreciate you guys. Peace.